Unified Diagnostic Services. Uh, and in this session, uh, we will discuss on ECU Reset 0x11 service. Before we get into the ECU Reset service, uh, we need to know some basics of how ECU is connected into a battery power supply and how the ECU is getting powered up uh, from uh, the battery source. So the basic, uh, you know, a simplified ECU battery connection diagram is shown here. So there are three, uh, you know, units available here. One is battery and second thing is ignition key and third one is the ECU. The ECU is getting powered from battery. The battery positive and negative terminals are connected to uh, ignition switch. And uh, the ignition switch uh, with the key cylinder, uh, normally the ignition switch will have a off position, on position and uh, a crank position. And uh, when you move the ignition switch from off to on position, then the ECU gets the power supply directly from the battery. But if you remove the key from the ignition cylinder uh, or uh, moving from uh, off position to on position to off position, then the ECU also get uh, disconnected. <laughs> so when ECU receives the power supply, then a power on sequence will start. Same the case when you remove the key from the key cylinder, then there is a shutdown sequence happens with the ECU. So the shutdown sequence can be triggered by means of a hard read reset. That means uh, that is equivalent to removing the battery terminal from the you know, ECU. That means the ECU power supply is removed at battery terminals. <laughs> that is called as hard reset. This kind of situation happens if you happen to be working in a OEM. So many a times our tire one supplies uh, will send us uh, different types of software and we start flashing the ECU and for some reason, the ECU might not respond. In such time, it is required that you know you have to remove the you know, battery terminal and to restart the application software again. So that is one of the equivalent you know hard reset uh, situation, uh, which is discussed here. And uh, in some cases, uh, even in your bench development, sometimes. When the ECU is not responding for some reason, it is required to you know, switch off your power supply, bench power supply, then the ECU restarts again. So this kind of you know, direct removal of positive and negative supply for the ECU is called as hard reset. In hard reset case, uh, you know, it might result uh, in reinitializing the both volatile memory and non-volatile memory uh, with the predetermined values. In the next one is uh, you know the key on off reset. In this case, uh, we are not removing the battery as discussed previously. Silly. Instead, you know you remove the key from the key cylinder. Then that is also more or less equivalent to you know removing the battery terminal from the uh, ECU supply. So in the key on off reset is uh, enabled whenever there is a key transition from on to off happening. Uh, in this situation, typically the values of non-volatile memory locations are preserved and volatile memory will be reinitialized. So what happens basically in, in the, the one more connection is not shown even in, 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 in the simplified battery connection, especially on this slide, the 12 volt 
battery is also connected in parallel to you know the ignition key lines so that there are two types of you know i'll just show you in the preview next slide see look at here so in general normally issues uh, in the modern issues which involve the security related you know features these issues will have two you know battery lines connected to them one is coming from the battery directly to you know ecu powering up the ecu and and the other line is uh, coming from the ignition switch in uh, in this scenario the battery power is always available to the ecu even though the key is not uh, connected to the key cylinder that means in a scenario where you lock the vehicle and you you know get get out from the vehicle and you lock the vehicle and uh, when you even after locking the vehicle the ecu will not go into you know power off mode rather it go into a uh, reduced power mode initially with some standby shutdown time then it moved to a sleep mode and it goes to a deep sleep mode something like that based on the you know strategy which is implemented in the shutdown sequence so this is one of the scenario you know the reset scenario where you can something called enable rapid power shutdown sequence is possible with the tester that means with the ecu reset service id if you are sending a sub function of enable rapid power shutdown then these kind of scenarios will enable the ecu to get into a deep sleep mode with the standby standby time actually so most of the ecus nowadays has this kind of uh, you know connection because uh, many a times the ecus get uh, you know wake up through external triggers or through some can signals coming on the bus or when you receive a unlock signal remotely from your you know rke pke any such system then without the you know key being available in the vehicle the vehicle get prepared for some of you know its activities like um, you know authenticating the key remotely or you know turning on the engine remotely something like that so in such situations uh, you know the battery terminals are always connected to the ecu or even in an, an anti theft mode when when somebody is trying to you know intervene with uh, with the systems in in the vehicle or when and there is an unauthorized uh, entry into the vehicle and if if the strategy of your anti theft system is to give alarm system to outside doors then the ecus will be always in in powered in condition to enable such uh, functions so this is uh, you know enable uh, rapid power shutdown you know feature and uh, th there is one more uh, sub function available where you can also disable rapid power shutdown if if this is get activated from the diagnostic uh, tester so the last one is the soft reset you know which is basically in all other reset uh, we are uh, simulating uh, in a way that uh, the battery terminal are physically removed through some means of relay logic or something like that whereas in soft reset the diagnostic tester application request for reset and the application you know software in the ecu will re reset and start from reinitializing all its components and in this kind of soft reset uh, the application uh, without reinitializing of all previously learned configuration data and any adaptive uh, learnings and any other long term adjustments are not uh, cleared 
that means the, as i said without reinitializing it it will retain the values so to summarize uh, the different kinds of reset which is possible you know uh, with the ecu reset uh, function 0x11 there are seven different uh, sub functions are available and the last two are vehicle manufacturer specific and system supplier specific apart from that the first three you know the hard reset key on hard reset is uh, removing like a battery terminal and key off on reset is uh, equivalent to removal of your key from the key uh, you know key cylinder and uh, the soft request uh, reset is uh, application software reset 4 and 5 or uh, you know the battery terminal is continuously placed and you are requesting a quick uh, rapid power shutdown with some stand alone you know time so these are the different types of sub function as part of ecu request 11 so this uh, slide shows that what kind of request response are available for uh, ecu reset service 0x11 whenever there is a ecu you know request uh, for reset from the diagnostic tester then the ecu can send a positive response and after sending the positive response the requested uh, i know reset uh, functionality can be enabled or can be executed or even without the response also this can be executed both are allowed and that depends on the kind of implementation that uh, you are planning to do so as we discussed previously when a re request of 11 is given as issue reset then for a positive response it is expected the server to give a value of 51 that means adding a 40 hexadecimal value on the request it gives a positive response of 51 and the sub function can be requested from the tester or you know mentioned on the right hand side hard reset key off on reset or a soft reset and rest of them so with the help of the request sid 0x11 and the sub function types starting from 01 to 05 and 040 and 060 we can request the ecu to perform the requested uh, you know reset type in all these uh, the behavior of the ecu implementation once the you know uh, reset is executed you know that depends on the the power and sequence is depends on the particular ecu type or the particular you know components are being used as part of um, power and sequence from each of the ecu supplier and the negative response for uh, request sid is uh, you know 7f and the request is 0x11 and uh, the negative response is uh, received from the server due to various reason and on the right hand side the reasons are given below the 0x12 uh, means the sub function is not supported either any one of the sub function which is requested from the diagnostic tester is not supported by the ecu and 0x13 is a incorrect uh, message length or invalid format of data being received by the server that's why it's not supported and uh, 22 is conditions are not met as we discussed previous session the environment condition like uh, vehicle should not be uh, no driven when the ecu reset request is received or the engine should not be running at that time like that you know the environmental conditions should be met in order to execute such a service so if the conditions are not met then you receive a negative response code 0x22 and the last one is security access uh, denied 
this is because uh, the NFC shall be sent, you know, if, if the reset is a uh, you know, secured reset, that means uh, without the security authentication being given in that particular session, then you will not be in a position to execute the reset uh, function. So these are the negative response uh, codes. Yeah, that's all we have for uh, this session. And our next session will be on input output control by identifier 0x to serve 2f uh, service. So with this, uh, we have come to an end of session two. And uh, hope uh, the information is useful and your time is invested well. Thank you and see you again. Bye.